This is the best moments of the Barbecue Central Show in 10 minutes or less. Ever wish you could re-listen to your favorite interview or segment? Do you enjoy hearing older shows for the first time in years? Then the best moments of the Barbecue Central Show in 10 minutes or less is just what you need. Thanks for listening and enjoy the show. Hello, friends and neighbors. John Solberg here. You know I'm the host for the best moments of the Barbecue Central Show in 10 minutes or less. And I am super excited every week to let you know that today's episode is being brought to you by The Butcher Shop. Purveyors of highly sought after 100% Australian non crossbred Wylara 9 Plus briskets. And as always, they are handpicked just for you. The Butcher Shop has been retailing the finest meats for the past 15 years. Every week they ship out competition quality meats to many of the biggest teams in the competition scene across the nation. Simply put, teams who use the Butcher Shop win and they win often. You may not be a competitor, but you still deserve the finer cuts in life. Great news. Get a hold of the Butcher Shop because they're shipping out some of the finest prime, dry-aged Australian Wagyu and Japanese Wagyu steaks to people just like you and me who aspire to be the kings and queens of their backyards. The Butcher Shop always has Berkshire, Compart Duroc, Allegiance Duroc, and Prairie Fresh all-natural pork in stock, and it is always hand-picked just for you. You might be saying, John, that sounds pretty amazing, but what, what about something different, something kind of exotic? Rest easy knowing the butcher shop can get you an elk steak, a camel roast. Who knows what they can get? Give them a call and find out. I'll tell you how to do that in just a second. So let's review. The best competition briskets? Check. Best pork selection? Check. Giving you better overall options to cook at home? Check. Giving you exotic options? Check. Give the butcher shop a call today. 850-458-8782. That's 850-458-8782. Four five eight eight seven eight two. Mention the Barbecue Central Show. They're going to give you ten percent off your entire order each and every time. The Butcher Shop is home of the one hundred percent Australian non crossbred Wylara Nine Plus briskets. And here's what's going on today. We're going to take a journey back to August of two thousand and sixteen. Greg is going to catch up with my friend and Texas embedded correspondent, Mister Doug Shiding. Joining me now is your official Barbecue Central Show, Texas Embedded Correspondent, always ready to take the face of danger whenever needed. Doug Scheiding joining me here on the show. What's up, Dougie? Hey, Greg. How are you tonight? I am doing absolutely fabulous. Let me switch over here. Kind of tough to follow a Hall of Famer, Chris Lilly. Why? You're a Hall of Famer (laughs) in our book, Doug, and you know it. Let me get this uh, screen all set up here. There you are. All right, so uh, a couple of different places we're going to be uh, running to tonight here, Doug, and I appreciate the time that you give to the show as always. The IBCA uh, annual meeting was held two weeks ago now, I guess, uh, or week before last this past weekend. Uh, 91 members in attendance, um, you know, another handful of spouses. So let's say, you know, 150 to 10,000 people there. What do you think the overall mood and outcome of this annual meeting was and is it like one of the biggest ones ever yeah i would it it was probably the most well attended that uh i know about and yeah you're probably right about 140 150 people um in attendance it lasted almost all day and i um uh it was a good meeting there's a lot of changes you know craig is actually uh taking the bull by the horns and doing a lot of changes relative to IBCA, and, and so there were several big uh, big decisions that were made going forward, which will be to the improvement of the organization. All right, so here's the one that everybody wants to know about. If they heard about it on this show, they didn't end up following it. They've probably been hanging in limbo ever since. There was a motion put together to ban pellet cookers from IBCA events, and is it yay or nay? It is... Still allowed, thankfully. <laughs> Hellfuckers passed. Oh, my. Doug was going to have to go find a new sanctioning body. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I'm going to have to go back to drums or something. But like, uh, Was it even close? It passed the board of directors by a vote of 11 to 1. Really? 11 to 1. Wow. So a lot of, well, I think it's safe to say in the internet anymore, you know, the, the small percentage does the biggest screaming, but... You know, from your best estimates, is it a small percentage of Yelpers, or do you think there was kind of a growing movement of, if we can get enough steam behind it, let's go ahead and take it out if we can? 
No, I think it was a a, a large uh, voice from a few people. So it um, it I don't think it really had much momentum uh, at all. Um, uh, kind of a corollary to that, the electric, the no electric devices was expanded um, in 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 a rule so that now uh, no electric devices, proofing cabinets, or heating lamps can be used as holding devices for meat after it's been cooked. So are we good with that? Yeah, I'm good with that. I mean, I, if, you know, it, it's okay. You know, I, you know, cause you could use, technically you could use a Traeger to hold it at 180, you know, because it is cooking with wood and it's not a, a fully electric device, but, um, uh, yeah, so I, I'm okay with that. All right. Uh, one of the other items that I don't really know too much about is blocking of a brisket. Yes, what? blocking of a, a brisket is basically, um, depending on how you cook your brisket, some people trim it so that, you know, let's say if a box is, box is eight, eight inches, yep. they'll, they'll cut it down, you know, the brisket to about nine inches because it'll shrink up and it'll fit right, in, right into the box. Sure. Well, I'm one of the ones that uh, I like to cook a full brisket and I like to cook it for a long time. So when I put my brisket slices in, it actually wraps around the, bo- the turn-in box probably aesthetically doesn't look as pleasing. So I'm very happy that they allow the blocking of briskets so that it can fit nice and neat in the box. All right. One of the other things was, uh, I got to find it here. Is it uh, something about a fat side up slice not being allowed or you have to turn it in fat side up or something like that? Yeah, this is a continuation of a rule change that was made mid-year last year. All right. So what what is the rule? The rule was, that was made last year by the board of directors between meetings was that you <laughs> cannot turn in a brisket fat side up. That basically all of your entries, chicken, ribs, and brisket, has to be meat side up. So to me, I was actually for letting turning in brisket fat side up because you're, in a way, dictating how a cook has to cook the the brisket, because if you wrap it, you know, the Texas crutch, then you're probably going to wrap it fat side up and turn it in. Cause you know, if you can get bark on fat, I guess you can, but, um, um, I think that dictates how you cook the brisket. So I was actually for, uh, the rule before they changed it to that. You could, had to turn it in meat, you know, meat side up or the bark side. So you did like fat side up. I did not oh, like okay. that side up. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I liked it as a, as a turn in, turn it in however the heck you want. I don't care, but uh, yeah, exactly. All right. Um, some of the other rules that you saw, you either thought were good or weird or newsworthy. A, a good change, and in, in for some of those cooks like uh, the butcher and some that venture into Texas and cook IBCA, for if pulled pork is a category, now pulled pork instead of in Texas, pull uh, pork had to be pulled. That was the only way you could you could turn it in. Now you can turn it in as pulled, chunks, shredded, or sliced, but you'll have to turn in all of the same. So you can't mix, you know, let's say medallions and pulled or, or, you know, like you can in KCBS, but you can turn in one of all medallions or, you know, one of all pulled just like you had been before. So I actually think that's a good rule change. Yeah, and I think, you know, as far as KCBS is concerned, by and large, a lot of the great pork cooks are doing money muscle slices and turning it in like that and not really mixing up a bunch of different pork. By right, and large, exactly. by and large, yeah. Yeah, so now, 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 you know, for us IBCA cooks, we can start practicing more in those cook-offs that have pull, pull, you know, pork as a category. We can start practicing more cooking the money muscle as medallions. Here's a rule that I can't believe, especially being brisket, heaven, USA, Texas. Burnt ends not allowed? Texas, it's like a whole other country. Find out what Doug had to say about the IBCA and burnt ends. Head on over to the BBQCentralShow.com. You know there's a link in today's show notes. It'll take you to the complete episode. Go give that a listen. Let me know what you think. I challenge you to send me an email. Send it. Tell me what you're doing. Tell me what you think. 
John J. Owen, John at the BBQCentralShow.com. And until next time on the best moments of the Barbecue Central Show in 10 minutes or less, I am your host, John Solberg, and I really, truly look forward to talking to you again soon. <laughs>